Can you see him? Can you see him? Rocky Mountains, man. We're in the mountains. It's kind of a foggy day and it's snowing a bit. We can't really see them, but there they are. We're in the Rocky Mountains, British Columbia, Canada. We're in Golden, BC. Good morning, you sitting there. Thanks for clicking my video today. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the little bell so you get a notification. I make a new video every day. So you don't want to miss one, otherwise you're out of the loop. So like I've been saying, we parked here in Golden overnight. Just getting going now. It's going to be a good day. Diesel, I can feel it. We have 659 kilometers left to our destination. We are at an elevation of 803 meters above sea level. I know to you Americans, I'm speaking like Chinese right now, but metric is what I speak. I'm... Um, um, not very good at converting off the top of my head. I know there's like mathematical equations to do that like really quick, but hey, I'm a truck driver and a YouTuber. Cut me some slack. Did I just spit on my steering wheel for crying out loud? And you guys expect me to do math. I'm just trying not to spit all over the place. <laughs> you can always go to Google and uh, do the conversion. Go like 800 meters in feet. Let's do it right now, okay? I'll do, I'll, this one's free. This one's free, all right. Google has all the answers, unfortunately. Google. Google, Google, Google. Okay, so we're 803 meters above sea level. 803 meters, or just M2 feet, or FT. It equals 2,634 and a half feet above sea level right now. We have 659 kilometers. That one I know the math for. 659 divided by 1.61 equals 409.3 miles. And we have 13 hours to do it in. We should be able to do it, but like I was showing you out here, the weather, uh, it looks kind of all right here in town, right? But as soon as you get out of, out of town and get into the mountains, I can tell it's gonna be a pretty brutal, brutal day. Lots of washer fluid today. This almost looks like dad. Not quite though, dad has a little bit of a different paint job, but he's got a Freightliner Classic like that. All right, Diesel. And off we go to start our very scenic day. I have a feeling it's gonna be a good day. Maybe a little bit stressful, white knuckle driving at times, but it's gonna be a good day. Turn right on highway one, then turn right. There's only one highway to get onto, and I need to go west yet, Mandy. I guess that would mean, yeah. Do a little loop here. Because right now, we're headed east. It's just the road that I'm on. I've got to turn around and go the opposite direction. Come on. All right. Turn right on one. And a green light right away. Thank you. All right, here's the Trans-Canada. <laughs> Let's Drive go. 656 kilometers on one. 656 to my next turn. That's in Langley, in the lower mainland on the other side of the Rockies. Let's get her done. Well, the road here is still as bumpy as ever. <laughs> uh, glad to see nothing's changed here. Beautiful though, eh? How all the snow just sort of clings to the trees like that. Winter time is one of the most beautiful times in British Columbia, but it's also one of the most dangerous times on the highway. 
really gotta sort of know what you're doing when you go through here. Because the speed limit through here is 100 kilometers an hour, it's like 65 miles an hour. But you don't exactly want to do that in this weather. You don't exactly want to do the speed limit. And you have to slow down for the corners, even in summertime. So it's best you just take it easy when you go through here and let those behind you pass when they want to pass. Nothing's more frustrating than when a passing lane shows up and you speed up. But don't go faster than what you feel comfortable with. Remember, let those behind you pass when it's safe. Slow down for them. And most of all, have fun. Because it's going to be a bumpy ride. Truck's already been cleaned up. Oh my. Slow down, people. Slow down. Yikes. That might have been icy too. Might have been other factors involved. We're just coming into Revelstoke, British Columbia here. This is where I was hoping to make it to, but I couldn't quite make it. I started in Balgoni, Saskatchewan yesterday, and this is where I was hoping to, uh, hoping to get to. So I realized it's a little bit of a stretch, especially in wintertime with the weather. So if I want to make the Revelstoke next time on my second day or whatever, I have to at least get to Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan coming west so I can get to Revelstoke the next day. This is where I was hoping to start the day off. But, whatever, we slept in Golden. Nothing wrong with that. It was a golden night in Golden. I've stayed here before in Revelstoke once. Uh, years ago I was doing a load, uh, a special assignment load uh, and I had to stay here over the weekend and I actually got a motel to stay in and everything diesel was with me I think that was something like four or five years ago already Good times It's a nice little town. It doesn't look like much here on the highway, but you turn left you go into town It's actually a really cool old little town A lot of their old buildings are very well preserved continue down the road here. My next stop is going to be in Sycamus. They have a Tim Hortons there, so obviously it'd be a crime just to drive right through that town. I believe they probably have a Tim Hortons here in Revelstoke too, but uh, no truck parking anywhere near it from what I've seen. Revelstoke here is a huge uh, ski town, snowboarding town, snowmobiling town. Uh, they got a big resort just at the lights here, I believe. You turn right and you go up the mountain. There's a huge, huge winter resort thingamajigger up there. Sycamus BC now and we're coming up to an accident scene according to the signs. Single lane traffic. Not too sure what to expect here yet but hopefully nobody got seriously hurt. This road going through here is not safe. And it's the same thing with Northern Ontario. Remember when I went through there all the time. Northern Ontario and through British Columbia here. I. 
I know that it's a money issue, that there's not enough money to build a four lane divided highway through the mountains here. But when you drive on the highways through the Rockies and the, and the, the Appalachians uh, and the Cascades, all, all the mountains in the states, mountain ranges, they all got big four lane divided freeways going through there, right? And it makes for a much safer, comfortable ride. And they didn't have the money for those highways either when they built them. They're probably still paying them off. You know, without getting political and everything on here, I really think that a lot of the money we're sending overseas in Canada would be much better spent here in Canada building, say, a four-lane divided highway through the Rocky Mountains here for the safety of the Canadian citizens traveling through here and the visitors and tourists that come through here too. I think the money that comes from Canadians that we give to the government in good trust should be spent here. But instead, we have to deal with these accidents all the time. And these narrow two-lane dangerous mountain roads and Northern Ontario's dangerous roads in wintertime. And then they tell us that it's a money thing. That's just my own personal opinion on it, personal take. But like I said, that's I'm not a politician. And I'm not in charge of all this money and stuff. So Maybe they know something that I don't. They're gonna let this traffic through coming this way. Uh, this is the eastbound traffic coming through here right now. Anytime now, that worker should be switching the sign over to say slow. I'm not too sure how big this accident scene is. It's quite a bit of traffic coming through here already, so it must be pretty big. If they ever do build a four lane divided highway going through here though, one thing I would really miss is this little two lane road. You know, this is sort of like the Route 66 of Canada. It's a nice scenic little road. It's just dangerous. <laughs> oh, we're moving, let's go. Pitter patter, let's get at her. Let's go. Clean my window here so you guys can see what all the fuss is about. Looks like it's gonna be on the left hand side of the road there. From what I can tell. Eesh, I wonder what happened. So far I just see tow trucks and construction crews and whatnot. Maybe they cleaned it all up already. Oh no, it's still in there. Oh, a truck slid right off the road there. Oh man, oh, did you see that? It looks like the driver was okay, that's still a mess. The thing about these little mountain roads though, when there's an accident, it's always a bad one. Pretty crazy these drifts off to my right here, right? Eh? They're almost as high as my window. Or some some cases are higher than my window. Wow. They get a lot of snow here apparently. With the Zokios brake check here. We're obviously coming towards a big hill. I'm guessing that's gonna be the big hill down to the mainland. The lower mainland. We are at 1,213 meters above sea level right now, so it's just Oh, a little ways under a mile, probably I don't know, a three quarter mile or something like that above the ocean. And we've got to make our way all the way down to sea level within the next 65, 70 miles. So we better make sure our brakes are in good working order here. Where am I going to park? Yikes, man. I heard they got a lot of snow here. They got it all cleared away already, obviously, but wow. Oh, I see a spot up above, up in front there. Take back to five. Oh my. Lots of trucks in here. And we're all the way down to 40 meters above sea level. 
Whew. That was a good downhill drive, but we made it. No more snow down here, as you can see. I'm gonna go into the Flying J right there in front of us, grab us some fuel. Oh, let's try and let's, let's not cut off this vehicle. Cause I'm not that kind of person. Grab us some fuel here, wash the windows, wash the lights again, wash the mirrors. It was a messy ride through the mountains. <coughs> oh man. I do have gone through about two gallons of washer fluid just today. Beautiful area here though, eh? Wow. Oh, did I want to go around this way? Yeah, I think so. Once this guy's backed in here, I'll be able to go past here. All right, Diesel, I'm gonna grab some fuel real quick and then I might go find myself a parking spot and I've gotta figure out where I'm gonna spend the night tonight. Uh, we're an hour and a half or so. What's the GPS say here? Oh, we're one hour from our destination. And I think I can park on the street right by the customer and that would be my preferred place to park because then I'm there first thing in the morning because I wanna get unloaded right at 7 a.m. For, I have to be there on time. Uh, plus, the earlier I get unloaded, the sooner I can get to my reload. I have to be at my reload before 1 p.m. Apparently, I'm one of two trucks that's hauling a crane from BC here to Manitoba. Kind of curious to see how that load's gonna turn out or what it's gonna look like. Well, I was able to have a shower there at the Flying J in Holt, BC, and I drove the rest of the way all the way to, uh, all the way into Langley. Here. And we're at the customer. We're gonna be delivering right there around the corner first thing tomorrow morning. So I'm already here. So I can't be late. I'm already there. I guess I could be late if I sleep in and then wouldn't that be embarrassing, eh? Being late when I slept like right outside their door. We can't let that happen. We have to set alarms. I have to deliver here in 12 hours. So I have some time yet. I'm gonna work on some videos here and probably play some games on the computer and then head to bed hope you guys enjoyed the day very scenic day tomorrow will be another scenic day let's hope we can get unloaded here as fast as possible 7 a.m. we they want me here and then from here I've got to go 15 minutes down the road and pick up a load like I said uh, some kind of a park for a crane and hopefully they can load that on me very, very quickly and I can strap it or chain it, whatever I need to do and secure it very quickly. We don't have to tarp it, I know that already. And then just make a beeline for home. My goal, let's see if we make this, all right? You guys hold me accountable on this one. My goal is to get home late, late, late Friday night, which means I gotta drive a full like 12 hour day tomorrow, sleep just a minimum eight hours, and then drive another full 12, 13 hour day the next day. So it's gonna be two very, very long driving days ahead. It would make the weasel's day if you would subscribe and tell a friend and get them to subscribe too. Right, Diesel? Tell them. Tell them. How could you resist that face? Right? We'll see you tomorrow. Take care, keep your stick on the ice. All that good stuff. <laughs>